With Rise of the Tomb Raider coming out on PC, the time has come to build a PC that doesn't miss out on stunning graphics and won't break the bank with the price tag. So meet Predator, the most inexpensive way to play Rise of the Tomb Raider. So what makes up the guts of Predator? Well first, start with the case. I went with the stunning Fractal Design Arc Mita R2. This case not only looks good, but houses a plenty of room for future upgrades. For hard drive, I went with the HyperX Fury 120GB solid state drive. For power supply, we went with the Corsair VS550. Although this may be one of Corsair's entry line power supplies, it still contained all the features we needed and fit perfectly into the budget. Moving up to the motherboard, we went with the super budget ASRock FM2A58M-HD+. What a name for a board. This board may not feature all the upgradability like extra RAM and PCIe Express slots, like most expensive motherboards do, but for $60, it does everything I need. For RAM, we went with an 8GB set of 1866 MHz HyperX Fury memory. With the increased speed of 1866 MHz plus an SSD, this baby should fly in everyday tasks. And with 8GB of memory on tap, it'll be more than enough to play games at full speed. The CPU was a difficult choice for me, but after much research, I went with the AMD A10 7700K APU Black Edition. The reason I went for this chip is because it's unlocked. It's a Black Edition AMD chip, which means it can be overclocked as far as cooling likes. And to keep this thing cool, we went with a Malstorm 120mm liquid CPU cooler. This entitled us to get massive overclocking capabilities and push this system to the limit. For the final component of this build, we needed a good graphics card, and boy do we have one today. I went with the Sapphire Radeon HD 7950 VaporX Edition. This card has 3GB of VRAM, which should certainly be able to hand almost anything we can throw at it. And for less than $100, it's one of the best cards out there priced to performance. To build this PC, all we need is two tools. A Phillips head screwdriver, and a computer of some sort to bring up instruction manuals in case we get lost. Not that I'll need them. Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with my 2014 gaming PC build guide. Ready to build yourself a computer? No, 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 take that off screen. I don't want them to see that. That's not to be shown. So that's all well and done. The PC is built, standing right in front of me, and I love this thing. It's all good that it costs $400. All links will be down in the description, by the way. Prices may vary, so don't hold it against me if it's maybe 420, 430. I was lucky enough to get a lot of these on sale in Australia and then convert them back to US. That's how I was able to afford a lot of these things. But benchmark time now. What's going to be the best way to do this? Well, Tomb Raider 2013 is going to be the first one that we benchmark. That is the last Tomb Raider before Rise of the Tomb Raider. And then we're going to jump straight into Rise of the Tomb Raider. So I'm going to compare the Xbox One in Rise of the Tomb Raider as well just to show you, since it was built for Xbox One, how well this PC does. Since this costs, in Australia, the exact same amount. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video so far. Stick around, you'll be pretty surprised by the benchmarks.
even though the PC runs the game smoothly, that's not the essence of Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider is about showing off the world and the exotic locations that many people won't visit. And to me, that is even more special than hardware. In 2016, Tomb Raider marks its 20th anniversary and 10th game in the franchise. So here's to the last 20 years of Tomb Raider, and may the next 20 be even better. I'm James Vectra, and I'll see you in the next video.